وحسن وحسين وآله وأصحابه بعدل كل مخلوقاتك اللهم صل وسلم عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله مجھے کیسی بلا نے گھیرا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو بہت ہے دشمن میں ہوں اکیلا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو بہت ہے دشمن میں ہوں اکیلا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو تیرے سوا نہیں ہے میرا تیرے سوا نہیں ہے میرا نہ کوئی حادی نہ کوئی حامی ہے دو جہاں میں تیرا وسیلہ ہے دو جہاں میں تیرا وسیلہ حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو میں اپنا احوال کیا بتاؤں میں اپنا احوال کیا بتاؤں فسان دل کا کسے سناؤں بہت پریشان دل ہے میرا بہت پریشان دل ہے میرا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو تمام حق کے جو اولیاء تمہارے در کے ہی مانگتا ہے تم تمام حق کے جو اولیاء ہے تمہارے در کے ہی مانگتا ہے تم ہی عمر شد تم ہی ہو مولا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو مجھے ایک ایسی بلا نے گھیرا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو مجھے تو آلے آبا کی خاطر امام موسیٰ رضا کی خاطر مجھے تو آلِ عبا کی خاطر امام موسیٰ رضا کی خاطر جمال اپنا تو مجھ کو دکھلا جمال اپنا تو مجھ کو دکھلا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو تم ہی ہو استاد اہل مانا تم ہی ہو سخیل اولیاء کے تم ہی ہو ستاد اہل مانا تم ہی ہو سرخیل اولیاء کے ہمیں تو راہ ہے طریق بتلا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو ہم 
ہمارے دل کی یہ مدعا ہے ہمارے تجھ سے یہ التجا ہے ہمارے دل کی یہ مدعا ہے ہمارے تجھ سے یہ التجا ہے حبیب آج کمی ہے تیرا حبیب آج کمی ہے تیرا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو مجھے کیسی بلا نگیرا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو بہت ہے دشمن میں ہوں اکیلا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو حبیب آجز کمی ہے تیرا حسین میری مدد کو پہنچو السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ تعالی وبرکاتہ Alhamdulillah, Subhan Alhamdulillah We are very privileged, very honored on this evening, the 9th of Muharram to have with us a very dear speaker our Al-Hajj, Shaykh Mawlana Hafiz Muhammad Fuzi Al-Sufi and inshallah we would like to respectfully call him on in the interest of time and inshallah without much further ado he will deliver our discourse for us this evening. Jazakallah khair. Hafsab, Bismillah. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusallim ala siyirina wa nabiyyina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa maulana muhammadin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama rasulihi nabiyyil aminil makinil haninil kareem rahufi rahim. Amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajimi bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim. قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلي وفاطمة وحسن وحسين وآله وأصحابه بعدد كل مخلوقاتك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Most respected Mashaykh, Ulama al-Kiram, my respected Allah's brothers and sisters in Islam, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and with the benedictions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we have gathered here on this ninth night of the blessed month of Muharram al-Haram to observe and to commemorate the martyrdom of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu salam and the members of his household and his companions on the battlefield of Karbala, which will culminate on the 10th night and the 10th day, which is observed as Ashura, observing Pesach in the era of Sayyidina Musa, Kalimullah alayhi salatu salam, and for us in, in observing the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallam, of observing and remembering and commemorating the martyrdom of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu salam. My topic for discussion today is dedicated solely to the two ahadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which were given in succession of within a period of nine days. The one was the declaration of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which he gave on the ninth of Zul Hijjah, on the day of Arafah which is narrated by Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And subsequently, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam once again made this declaration on the 18th of Zul Hijjah at an area or at a pond which is called Khum. It is therefore known as Ghadir al-Khum. 
And I'm dedicating my talk today to these two ahadith and particularly the declaration of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the 9th of Zul Hijjah, the day of Arafah, as well as nine days later in qadir e which is the hadith of Thakhalain, as you are aware, and I'll discuss that inshallah ta'ala later. The interesting fact here is that the Holy, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his declaration celebrated and declared two very heavy, weighty things which would be guidance for us after the physical demise of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then declared and his progeny is Ahlul Bayt. So in keeping with the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, today I'm going to celebrate those two weighty things, the Taqalain, the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt and the mutual relationship that the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt have one over another and how critically important this is for us inshallah ta'ala. So let's go back to the Holy Quran first. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the benediction of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every single day, five times in a day, we perform our Salah. And in five daily Salah, in every Raka'ah of Salah, we recite Fatiha Tul Kitab, which is Surah Tul Fatiha. As the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La Salata illa bi Fatiha Tul Kitab. There is no Salah without Fatiha Tul Kitab. So every day, five times a day, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And in Surah Al-Fatiha, we recite in the fifth verse, according to the Hanafis and the Malikis, in the fifth verse, we make this dua to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ So five times a day in every single salah, in the, we make a dua in the fifth verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, which is إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Now Surah Al-Fatiha, like I said, is a very, very important surah because according to the, the, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and according to the Mufassirun and so on, they, it's one of the most important surahs in the, in, in the Holy Quran, so much so that it was given to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu on the night of Mi'raj as well, according to Fazi Ayaz. And interestingly, Fati, Surah Al-Fatiha, has 12 names according to Imam al -Qurtubi. So I'm talking about 5 here and 12 there. No implications as such. But 12 names have been given to Surah Al-Fatiha. Right? Amongst them, uh, 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 Surah Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Fatiha, Fatiha Al-Kitab, Umm Al-Kitab, Umm Al-Quran, Kafiyah, Wafiyah, Asas, etc, etc, etc. 12 titles have been given to Surah Al-Fatiha. And Surah Al-Fatiha is that surah which the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam spoke about in terms of that when you perform it in Salah. Every time you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala responds to you. Every verse that you recite in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala responds to you in Surah Al-Fatiha. Now, when we look at Surah Al-Fatiha itself and we look at that first verse that we are reciting five times a day, right? it is إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Now, generally, when people translate this, they translate it as guide us to the straight path. This is very important. Generally, we translate it as guide us to the straight path. But in reality, in terms of Arabic, the actual translation should be take us on the straight path. There's a big difference. Why? Because gu guidance can be given in two ways. One is where you verbally direct someone towards a certain direction, in the right direction. Hey, go here, take a left, this one, whatever it is inside there. Or you show it to them from a distance. You know what? Hey, there is it there, go this way, and you'll find it. And it's up to the person whether the person wants to take your directions and wants to reach his destination. He has the choice. He can opt in or he can opt out. Now, in terms of this ayah of the Holy Quran, if it was meant to verbally guide you or to show you where the direction was of your intended destination, then the ayah should have read, Ihdina ila sirati mustaqim. Hey, give, you know like how we say, hey, give me direction. Give me direction to sirat al mustaqim. But Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, according to the, the scholars of, of Balagha, 
Ihdina sirat al mustaqim literally means it is a second type of guidance here, and it literally means that you you are physically taken to the straight path. So nobody gives you a verbal instruction. Nobody just shows you, oh, there's it, you know, on a map, they tell you, oh, there's it. No, 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 no. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim literally means that somebody physically takes you onto the straight path. So it's a physical act. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Please keep this in mind. So this Ihdina sirat al mustaqim that we are dua, making dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, no, just don't give us verbal directions. Don't just show us where it is. But physically take us on the straight path. Or take us on the straight path. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Now, there are various uh, tafsirs and commentaries as to what sirat al mustaqim is. Right? But before I go into the tafsir there, um, Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziyyah has given some of the basic requirements as for something to be Sirat al-Mustaqim. And he has stated inside there that Sirat al-Mustaqim must have five qualities in it for it to qualify as a straight path. Did you understand that? Okay, it must have five qualities for it to qualify as a straight path. And he stays there, he says, he said, وَلَا تَكُونُ تَرِيخُ السِّرَاطًا حَتَّى تَضْمَنَّ خَمْسَةَ الْأُمُورِ الْإِسْتِقَامَةِ Firstly, it must have الْإِسْتِقَامَةِ right? I'll just give it to you first. وَالْإِصَالِ إِلَى الْمَقْسُومِ Then وَالْقُرْمِ وَسَعَتْهُ لِلْمَارِينَ عَلَيْهِ وَتَعَيُّنَهُ تَرِيقًا بِالْمَقْسُومِ Basically, what Imam Amul Qayyim al-Jawziyah is saying, he said, the first quality that Sirat al-Mustaqim must have to qualify as a straight path, that it must be going in the right direction. First requirement for Sirat al-Mustaqim, that it must be going in the right direction. There, and it's going straight. There is no, you know, turn this way and turn left and turn right, right? Because the Arabs don't use Sirat al-Mustaqim for any path that has a few, you know, diversions or whatever it is. It literally means a straight path. So the first requirement according to Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya to be a straight path is that it must have istiqamah, that it must be going in the right direction. Secondly, it must al isal is ilal maqsood. It must take you to your destination. No use giving you a path and then, you know, go straight. But you don't ever reach your destination. So it must be a straight road. It must take you to your destination. And number three, it must have qurb. It must be the shortest possible route to your destination. It mustn't be a long, winded road. Right? It must be the shortest route to your destination. And the fourth one is that it mustn't be a narrow road. You know, when it becomes difficult for you to navigate, it must be a very broad road. So you can easily navigate the road. And if it has that quality, then it is Sirat al -mustaqim. And then, and finally, the fourth quality is that the, your path must be clearly defined. If it's telling you you're going to a certain point, it will tell you this is what it is. And it shows you all the parameters. And if you follow that day, you know clearly, hey, I am on Sirat al -mustaqim. So when you look at Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, you will see that firstly, you're making a dua to be physically taken on a straight path. And that path is going in the right direction. It takes you to your destination. It is the shortest possible route, meaning it's the easiest route. And it's a very broad road, so it's easy for you to travel. It's comfortable for you to travel. And the parameters are clearly defined. So Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah says that these are the requirements for something to be Sirat al Mustaqim. Now let's go to the Tafsir. The Mufassirun have, have, have had different opinions, all of them are correct, in terms of what Sirat al Mustaqim is because it's a very, you know, it's a very broad definition. So some of the scholars said the Sirat al Mustaqim, like Muhammad bin Hanafiyyah, who's the son of Ali al Murtaba, he said Sirat al Mustaqim is actually deen, religion, very broad. Fudayl ibn Ayaz, he restricted it and he confined it. And he says, no, Sirat al-Mustaqim are the rich rites and the rituals of Hajj. Some of the scholars, and this Imam Qurtubi I'm quoting from, some of the scholars say that Sirat al-Mustaqim is actually the Sunnah. So when you're saying, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, it is, uh, Ya Allah, guide us to the Sunnah so that we may perform all the obligations that are due to you. But what is very important is that the word Ihdina, guide us or take us physically, as I said, on a straight path. You know, if you look at the word, look, look at the word ihda, it literally means to incline towards something. So when you are being guided some, to something, that it mustn't be something that is done out of duress. You yourself must incline towards it. And the word ihdi and hadiyah 
also or hidayah comes from the word hadiyah, which means it's a gift. Because a gift moves from one owner to another. When you take something from here and you give it to somebody else. So, ihdina siratan mustaqim. So, they say that hidayah, ihdina siratan mustaqim. Siratan mustaqim can mean pilgrimage, which is confined. It can mean deen, which is very generalized. It can also mean the sunnah of the Holy Prophet. It means obligations of the sunnah, requirements, the Quran. So many translations have been given according to Imam Ibn Jarita. But he says it's very short. But one of the, the scholars has subsumed all of these meanings, which means literally take us on the straight path. And Imam, uh, his name is uh, the, 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 the Tabi'i, who said this was, was Abu Aliya. And Abu Aliya Right? He stated that his opinion is that Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, take us on the side, but As Sirat al Mustaqim personified is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So if you are saying Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim physically guide us and take us on the straight path, then the only one who can physically, in a practical way, Take us on the straight path is none other than Muhammad Rasulullah because the Holy Prophet is the the Holy Prophet is Sunnah, the Holy Prophet is Hajj, the Holy Prophet is guidance, the Holy Prophet is everything that being is is all found in the being and in the hidayah and the nubuwa and the salat of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah. So Abu Aliya said this and it was mentioned to Imam Hassan al Basri. Imam Hassan al Basri is the student. Of Imam Ali al Murtaba Karim, and our spiritual orders of the Chishtiya Silsila in particular flows from Ali al Murtaba to Imam Hassan al Basri. When it was mentioned to him that Abu Ali said that the straight path is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah wa and his two companions Abu Bakr and Umar, he said, undoubtedly Abu Ali said it is true and it is good advice that he has given and Qadi Yaz in his Ashifa has also confirmed this that Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim Sirat al-Mustaqim huwa Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so now that we have established that physically, practically the one who is going to take us on the straight path is found, all of that guidance is found in the being and the personage of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. What we have ascertained so far is that who is Sirat al-Mustaqim? What we found out so far is who is Sirat al-Mustaqim? But, and this is very important, pay careful attention. I haven't given to you the meaning of what is Sirat al-Mustaqim. We know who is Sirat al-Mustaqim, but what is Sirat al-Mustaqim? In order for us to understand what is Sirat al-Mustaqim, Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziyah again, he literally described what Sirat al-Mustaqim is. And he said, linguistically speaking, pay careful attention to this, linguistically speaking, Sirat al-Mustaqim, لِأَنَّ الْخَطَّ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ هُوَ أَقْرَبُ خَطٍ فَاصِلٍ بَيْنَ نُقْطَتَيْنِ he said, Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Mustaqeem is that line, that short line, which connects two dots to one another. So Sirat Al-Mustaqeem is actually what? A short line which connects two dots to one another. Did you understand that? I'm going to repeat it. Sirat Al-Mustaqeem is that short line, straight line, going in the right direction, clearly defined, which connects two dots to one another. So now we know what literally Sirat al-Mustaqeem is. So if Sirat al-Mustaqeem is a right straight line, which is connecting two dots to one another, and we know who Sirat al-Mustaqeem is, now we need to find out what the two dots are. That Sirat al Mustaqim is connecting us to because the Prophet of Allah is Sirat al Mustaqim. So, what are the two dots that the Prophet of Allah is connecting us to? We need to find out who the two dots are or what the two dots are. Well, Ali al Murtada, Babu al Ilm, let the secret out. According to Tasir Ruh al Bayan in other books as well, Ali al Murtada declared about himself 
You know this whole the, this narration that the entire Quran. I'm just giving the gist of the entire Quran is to be is, is to be found in Surah Al-Fatiha, and the entire Surah Al-Fatiha is can be found in, in, in Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and the entire Bismillah Rahman and the sequence of Bismillah Bismillah Rahman Rahim can be found in the birth of Bismillah. And Ali ibn Murtada then said, "Ana nukta taht al ba," and Ali said, "I am the nukta below the ba." What did Ali say? I am the nukta below the bur of Bismillah. I am the dot below the bur of Bismillah. Got it? Right. Now let's go to the hadith. The hadith declaration of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam first takes place in a general public assembly where for all intents and purposes historically, right, the entire ummah that could possibly come for Hajj had all attended. Practically every Muslim had attended that Hajj, Hajjatul Wada. What day is it? Yawm Arafah, the day of Arafah. Al, -ara Al Hajj Arafah. And what is Arafah? Hajj is Arafah. On that day, Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah, Radullah ta'ala anhu states, he said, and it's a Sahih Hadith, by the way. There's no doubt about it. It's a Sahih Hadith. He says, "Ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi hajjatihi yom arafa, wa huwa ala naqati al-qaswa." He said, "He said I saw the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of Arafa." And do you know what day that was? Ninth of Zulhijjah. Ask Umar ibn Khattab what day that was, because the Jews said to him, "You know, if the verse, if the verse, al yom akmaltu today." Akmaltu lakum dinakum. Very important point I'm putting across. Today I have perfected your religion for you was revealed to us, the Jews, we would have celebrated that day as an Eid, as a day of rejoicing. So Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab said, yes, it was a day of Eid. It was the day of Hajj, and it was Yomul Jumu'ah. And the Holy Prophet made this declaration on that day. And what did the Prophet of Allah say? On the, on the day that al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum, today I have perfected your religion for you. On that day of Arafah, on Friday, when Allah revealed this ayah of the Holy Quran, it is on that same day. We can't call it coincidence. It was on that same day. The Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu stated that the Prophet of Allah was on his naqa, on his step, qaswa. And what did the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say? And he said, يَخْتُبُ فَسَمِعْتَهُ يَقُولُ He said the Holy Prophet was giving a lecture. And I heard him say, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O people, not all Muslims only, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي قَدْ تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا إِنْ أَخَفْتُمْ بِهِ لَمْ تَدِلُّ He said, O oh, oh, people, I'm leaving two things for you. If you hold on to them, you will not go astray. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kitab Allah wa itrati ahlu bayti. And he said, what is those two things? The book of Allah and my progeny, my ahlul bayt. So what did the Prophet of Allah do on that day? Remember what I said, Sirat al-Mustaqim is that straight line which connects one dot to another dot. And that, that dot, that line is the shortest line which connects these two dots together. And Ali is telling you that in terms of the one dot, I am the nukta beneath the burr of Bismillah. So Ali already said what one nukta was, which is Itrati Ahlu Bayti. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam then stated, he said, I'm showing you what the second nukta is, and that is the Quran. Now, if you imagine it, the, the beginning of the Quran, when you open up any mushaf, it starts off with Bismillah rahman rahim So what is Ali telling you? Like the Quran starts off with birth, with that nukta, and it starts off there, Ali and the Ahlul Bayt are with the Quran from beginning to the end. And the Holy Prophet says in a hadith again in, in Tirmi al and Nisai and so on. And Sahih hadith, he said, And like the burr cannot be separated, like the dot can't be separated from the rest of the line which makes out a burr, in the same way the Quran and Ahlul Bayt will never ever be separated until they are reunited with me, the Prophet of Allah, at my fountain, Hawzul Gawsar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Wait, what did the Prophet of Allah do? He's about to leave the dunya. 
right? And this is his, one of his final wills and testaments. And he's telling you that I'm leaving two things for you. And in a hadith of Thakalain, which took place nine days later on the 18th of Zulhijjah, the Holy Prophet sometimes spoke about them and he described them as Thakalain, two weighty things, two heavy things in greatness, in honor, in, in, in opposition, and whatever it is. He said, one is greater than the other. One is Kalamullah, Kitabullah, right? the Book of Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. So one was a gift from Allah. Kitabullah is the gift of Allah. And wa itrati ahlu bayti and my progeny, my ahlul bayt, is the gift of Al Mustafa. So the Prophet of Allah is telling the gift of Allah is, is Allah's kitab, and the gift from me, Rasulullah, is my ahlul bayt. And I, being Sirat al Mustaqim, and I am the one who's connecting these two dots together. I am the Sirat al Mustaqim that connects them two together. What does this mean? Well, look at it. The Quran is a reflection of the Sirah of the Holy Prophet. And the Ahlul Bayt are a reflection and a mirror of the Surah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm leaving two things for you, he said, I'm leaving my inner reality and inner beauty for you in the form of the Holy Quran, and I'm leaving my outer beauty to you in terms of the Ahlul Bayt. And if you see, if you hold on to both of them, you will have my seerah, my, my character and my history and my life and my sunnah, and you will have my surah in the form of Ali al Murtada. Therefore, Sayyidah Aisha, Umul Meen Aisha Siddiqa, when she was questioned, tell us, describe the Prophet of Allah to us. So this, she didn't describe his physical characteristics, she described his spiritual characteristics. And what did she say? Kana al Quran. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Khulq, his character was the Quran. Wa inna ka ala khuluqin azim. Ya Rasulullah you are the most of the most magnified character. And the Holy Quran is replete regarding the the, 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 the character of the Holy Prophet, the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet, everything of the Prophet of Allah, from the, uh, the Alif of Alham to the, to the scene of one Nas, is all about the Holy Prophet of Allah in one form or the other. You see, they say, uh, they say um, Wal asrihe tere zamaki kasam. Allah swears by the era of the Holy Prophet by swearing off Al Asr. Wal asrihe tere zamaki kasam. La amruk heteri jaki kasam. And Lamruk is Allah swears by your life, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Wal Balad Hetere Makaki Kasam. And Allah swears by Wal Balad, by your home of your residence of Makkah. Wal Balad Hetere Makaki Kasam. Tere Rehneki Jaka Kya Kehna. So Allah swears by the era of the Prophet of Allah. Allah swears by the life of the Prophet of Allah. Allah takes a Kasam by the city of the, the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Allah says, Ya Yuhal Muzammil. Allah says, Ya Yuhal Muddathir. Ya Allah, ya Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, Walau kunta fazzal ghalid al Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِرُكُمُ اللَّهِ I can go on, right? You know, Khalid Habib said, وَصْفَ بَصَرْ مَا زَاغَ بَصَرْ If you want to know what's the description of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu eyes, مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا تَغَى وَالشَّمْسُ دُحَى نُورِ أَنْوَرْ Ruwe Anwar and what Shams and what Duha describes the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what Layl describes the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, beautiful chest that would flow down. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. Right? So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's entire seerah is to be found in the Holy Quran. And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's entire surah and entire physical form is to be found in Ahlul. But in Ali al Murtada, Fatima al Zahra, and Ali Karamullah, and Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu was salam. Because the Holy Prophet sallam, and all the Sahaba used to say, nobody resembled the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam more than Hassan Karimani Sharifain. Hassan radiallahu anhu would, 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 would uh, mirror the Holy Prophet sallam, from here to here, and what was below that day, Imam al Hussein resembled. Similarly, Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala and her used to say about Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu ta'ala, nobody resembled the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of samtan, wadalwan, in terms of her deportment, in terms of her style, in terms of her mannerism, right? The way Fatima al-Zahra would reflect and mirror the character and mannerisms of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. So much so that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam said in terms of physical looks, Hassan al-Hussein resembled me the most. 
when he came to Ali, what did he say about Ali? He said, Lahmuhu lahmi wa damuhu dami. His flesh is my flesh and his blood is my blood. And when he said about Fatima the Zahra, Fatima to bada'atum minni, Fatima is a piece of my flesh. So from top to bottom, Rasulullah is telling you, if you want to see me physically and you want to be guided physically, then look for me physically in Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Al. Hussein, and if you want my spiritual guidance, then look to the Holy Quran because Umar um, bin Aisha Siddiqa said, "Qana khulqu al Quran." لقد كان لكم في رسول الله قسوة حسنة. Okay, did you understand that? Now comes the important point. What did I say about the straight line, straight path? It is that straight line, right, and the shortest line which connects two dots to one another. <laughs> so I want to ask you now, what is the distance? Of that line, which connects the two dots together. If I put a dot here and I put a dot here, I can say there's a five centimeter dis distance. If I put a dot there and I put a dot there, I'll say it's a one meter distance. If I went further, I could say so. A line could be as long as it could be, but here, Sirat al Mustaqim literally means a line with the shortest distance connecting two points to one another. So we know it's the shortest distance, but how short? How short? How close is the distance between the two dots that connects Ahlul Bayt with Quran? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam physically demonstrate the distance that will connect the two dots to one another. And in a hadith which is narrated by Ummul Mu'mineen, Aisha the Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the house of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he stated there that she says that she, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was in my house. And I'm narrating to the narration of Umm Salama as well, the wife of the Prophet of Allah. Again, two wives of the Prophet of Allah are telling the same thing that they, they, at different moments they were in my house. And he said, The Holy Prophet, so Aisha Siddiqua, said at, at that occasion, the Prophet of Allah was wearing a Kali Kamli, the Prophet of Allah was wearing a black cloak or a kisa, which had which was made out of a fine hair, yeah, wool, right? And it had the you know the emblems that at the edging of the of the of the riba or, or the cloak of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there was the edgings of you know the saddles of camels which became a pattern repetitive pattern around it and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam opened up his kisa opened up his abba or opened up his cloak and who entered Al Hussein entered who entered after that Fatima entered who entered after that um, sorry, Al Hussein entered Fatima, and who ended after that? Ali al Murtaba entered. In both these instances, in Umm Salma's house and Aisha Siddiqa's house, the Prophet of Allah opens his cloak. Hassan comes in, <coughs> Hussein comes in, Fatima comes in, Ali comes in. And what does the Prophet of Allah do? He takes the cloak and he closes his up. Now, I want you to imagine this. Rasulullah is Sirat al Mustaqim. That straight line that connects two dots to one another. The Prophet of Allah is the living Quran. His heart, his heart is the, the transmission point of the Holy Quran when Jibreel sends Wahi to him. So, in terms of physical presence of the Holy Quran in the universe, there is no greater physical presence of the Holy Quran anywhere greater than. In the being of Muhammad Rasulullah. So if Rasulullah is Sirat al Mustaqim, he's connecting the two dots to one another. I want you to join the dots now. What did the Prophet of Allah do? He took his cloak, he takes Hassan, Hussein, Fatima, Ali, and he covers them. How big can a cloak be? How can how big can a cloak be? If everybody is covering the cloak there, can you say there's much distance between them? Uh -uh. You can't. How can you measure that? This is no, everybody was inside. You can't even say what was the distance because you can't see anything because it's all under cover. Allahu Akbar. Without any similarities and parallels. Qaba Qawseini O Adna of the night of Mi'raj was a spiritual closeness that the Holy Prophet enjoyed in the presence of Allah. But a physical example was used to demonstrate to us the level of the spiritual proximity to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah, to Allah subhanahu spiritual proximity. And what was the physical description? Qaba Qawseyn, the, the distance of two bow lengths. You know when two bows come together, it literally creates like an arc, you know, like the, the two edges, it creates an arc. So they inter, in the intertwine, so to speak. 
that that becomes qaba qawsayni and then the prophet of then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said oh adla oh in fact spiritually proximity even closer than two bow lengths so the prophet of allah who's experienced that spiritual proximity of al miraj of qaba qawsayni wa adla in his cloak granted them the maza and granted them the, the ecstasy of experiencing qaba qawsayni o adla physically allahu akbar physically but but somebody could say yes there's still a space there's still a space because although you are in a cloak you are one second one third one fourth one fourth one so there has to be space for all of them in one cloak so there is a distance between them rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to clarify that matter as well he said don't you think that when i put them in my cloak there that i was connecting the two points together the quran which is in my heart the qalb of al mustafa and i was connecting my ahlul bayt within my kisa but if somebody dares say that there was still a distance between them let me the prophet of allah said then let me cut out any type of imagination of distance physical or spiritual as well and you saw them covering my cloak but let me tell you what the reality of them being in my cover in my cloak was the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded he said don't think there was a distance the prophet of allah said husayn min ni wa ana min husayn the prophet of allah said don't even think of a distance between them husayn is from me and i am from husayn so if husayn is from you and you from husayn is there any fasla is there any distance ali ali you min ni wa ana min ali i am from ali and ali is from me the rasul of allah even removed that type of distance as well he said hasanu min ni wa ana min coincidence For all of these people in particular, the Prophet of Allah is using these terms: Hasan wa Minni wa Ana min Hasan. Hasan is from me, and I am from Hasan. The Prophet of Allah is trying to show you that there is no distinction, there is no, there is no distance between us, physical or spiritual or otherwise. Whatever is in Hasan is from me. Whatever is in Hussein is from me, and what is whatever is in Ali is, is from me. And he said, "From Fatima, Fatima to Bada to Minni. Fatima is a piece of my flesh." Can you remove them? Can you extricate them? Can you take them out? No, you can't. So when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam stated, he said, "I'm leaving two things for you. If you hold on to them, you will never go astray." The Prophet of Allah stated, he said, "Kitab Allah wa itrati ahlu bayt." He said, "Wa lanya tafarraha." You you can't even imagine. or even try to have a guman of the distance because literally that is the shortest possible line that you could draw and i always use this example i said you know that one single tiny dot that will be the mark that will connect two dots together i think that line if it can be called a line would be that distance or qaba yani it has the spiritual mani- manifestation of qaba qawsayni o adna so the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam made it very clear in terms of all of this uh, these are my people these are my people and the reality of the matter is after that and this is very important the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith of saqalain on an ghadira qum the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about the virtues of the holy quran he spoke about how important the holy quran is that we should constantly be you know reading towards the holy quran reading towards it taking guidance from it and he, he, he exalted the virtue of the holy quran therefore i started off with the virtue of the holy quran the keeping of the sunnah of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the second thing that he did was he mentioned the virtues of the holy quran the whole of the holy quran once he spoke about his virtues once but when he came to his ahlul bayt the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said udhakkirukum allah fi ahli bayti udhakkirukum allah fi ahli bayti udhakkirukum allah fi ahli bayti he says i implore you for the sake of allah look at these words i implore you for the sake of allah to be mindful of my ahlul bayt why did he say that because the the, the nigah of, of al mustafa the insight of al mustafa knew allah had granted him this knowledge there that yes nobody will really argue about quran amongst the, the muslims everybody will accept quran whether you are this group or that ideological group everybody accepts quran nobody has a problem with quran everybody says we refer to quran everybody says we are guided by quran everybody is muttafaq about quran even in the age of google too, you can't find another quran of any ideological group no matter how much they try to hide it okay one quran everybody for all intents and purposes they are agreeable on quran 
But the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that the bone of contention in terms of guidance, which is critical for the Ummah, would be his Ahlul Bayt. And he realized, therefore, he said, I, he didn't say, I implore you for my sake. He said, I implore you for the sake of Allah. Be mindful of my Ahlul Bayt. Be mindful of my Ahlul Bayt. Be mindful of my Ahlul Bayt. And if there was any doubt in the Ummah, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, choice of his Ahlul Bayt, or the Azwaj al are also part of Ahlul Bayt. Aulad al and Ja'far and, and, and Abbas, all part of Ahlul Bayt. But the five pure ones, or the purified ones, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu specified in terms of Ahlul Bayt, Allahumma ha'ulai Ahlul Bayti. These are in particular, these are my in particular my Ahlul Bayt, wa Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and al Hussein, and if there's any doubt that in terms of guidance, they are the epitome of guidance, the Holy Quran testifies to it. I don't have time, you know, this is, I just like basically started my discussion. Right? Quran testifies to it. Quran speaks about in Surah Al Fatiha, what did he say? The Prophet of Allah gave you tafsir of an'amta alayhim. Those are whom Allah has showered with his favor. Is anybody the recipient of such favor and in'am and reward from Allah than Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein in terms of being Ali Kisa, Ali Aba? And the Prophet of Allah saying, Ali is from me and I am from Ali. So there's no distinction, so to speak. Hassan is from me and I am from Hussein. And, 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 and Hassan is from me and I am from Hassan. And Hussein is from, right? To them. But if there's any doubt about Ahlul Bayt being the rightly guided ones by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah's absolute, you know, Allah doesn't need to be convinced at all. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's declaration, Allah's declaration about them being on the straight path. What do we read in Surah Al-Fatiha? إِذِنَ السِّرَاطَ الْمُسَّقِينَ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The part of those upon whom Allah showered his favor. غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Not the part of those who have earned the wrath of Allah. And who are those? Ask any Mufassir, they'll tell you that refers in particular to the Yahud, the Jews. And neither the part of those who have gone astray. So we want the part that will take us on the straight path, not the, it's clearly defined, not the part of the Yahud and not the part of the Nasara. We want Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim. So now come back to Quran, the ayat of Mubahala. Who comes? The one of Walin come. The ones who have gone astray that Allah has said, you're making God really, Allah, don't put us on the path of the Dalim, those who have gone astray. The Christian of Nazaran come, and who are they? They are Christians. And what are they talking about? They're talking about the Trinity, which is part of Christian ideology. And right? eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to make a final declaration regarding the matter and judgment regarding the matter. And Allah said to the Prophet of Allah, you tell him, the Prophet of Allah didn't decide the matter. Allah decided it. Now, what is the fight about? Who is on Hidayah and who's on? Dalala, who's on guidance and who's on misguidance? Who's rightly guided and who's gone astray? Who is standing there? Christianity is on one side. Islam is on the other side. Allah makes a declaration. Tell them, come. Let's call our sons. You call your sons. And you call your women. And we call our women. And you yourselves come. Then we'll make mubahala. We'll sincerely, very humbly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whoever is wrong amongst us, the la'na of Allah will be on them. When this declaration was made by Allah, who was the Holy Prophet most convinced about? If I may use the word, and most sure about in terms of standing up for haq and representing hidayah and being on the straight path, as opposed to those who are going astray. From Abana'ana, who did he call? Hassan. Who did he call? Hussein. Nisa'ana. He could have for Aisha Siddiqa, radiallahu ta'ala anha. She's the wife of the Prophet of Allah. They are the first ladies, undoubtedly. She could have called Hafsa, radiallahu ta'ala anha, Umm Salma, you could have called one of the wives. You could have called the wives who are from Quraysh, from his family. Right? <coughs> like Umm Umini Sayyida Zainab. You could have called them Umm Habiba, the daughter of Abu Sufyan. All from Quraysh, all from, from the tribe of the Prophet of Allah. When he said Nisa Allah, who did he bring? He didn't bring the wives of the Prophet of Allah. He brought his daughter Fatima to Zahra. Niza'ana, when Anfusana, he said, bring yourself. The Prophet of Allah said, yes, let me show them that Ali you mean me, wa ala min Ali. I will come. I could have said, yeah, I'm coming on my own, but no, Ali is from me. Ali you mean me, wa ala min Ali. He brought Ali al-Murtada. He said, now, the representatives 
of hidayah and guidance for Islam according to the Holy Quran at that juncture when Christianity and Islam were standing up, you know, in front of one another to prove which is right and wrong. Who did Rasulullah call? These four. With him, five. So what does this tell you? That the, Allah already declared in the Holy Quran that these are rightly guided today, tomorrow, till the day of Qiyamah at Hosul Khosal and they'll continue to be like that in that position there, even in Jannah as well. Therefore, they are Sayyidah Shababi Ahlil Jannah. Now to conclude, because I've taken up quite a bit of time, right? And I ask you one question. We're always talking about this battlefield of Karbala, who was right, who was wrong, right? Uh, you know, Imam al Hussein alayhi is, is accused sometimes of engaging in rebel, being in rebellion, in, in rebellion, his khuruj, right? You know, he, he wanted to like, commit as the house of Allah in Zari, summa astaghfirullah, right? Treason and so on there, and he opposed the, 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 the rightly appointed governor. And you know what? Um, uh, Yazid had nothing to do with it, right? It was Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and generals in the army who were responsible, waghaira, 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 and everybody defends, you know, Yazid and the standpoints and everything. And, the, and Imam al Hussein sometimes is held accountable, whatever. No problem. Those discussions will continue till the day of Qayyamah. You'll always have those people who will be sympathetic towards, historically speaking, towards the cause of Yazid or towards the personality of Yazid. And you'll have those people there who are lifelong die-hard supporters of al Hussein. Who was right and who was wrong? Against the Christians of Najran, Allah decided who was right and who represented Haq. Pre-decided. Can they ever go wrong after that? That's all I want to ask you. Can they ever go wrong after? Can they ever be misguided after that? Can they be accused of bahawa, of rebellion, of treason, of, of desiring positions of authority? They're the leaders of Jannah. Do you think they want to become caliphs? That's one argument. But I will ask you a second argument. In the entire Muslim world, for those people who are sane, if I were to ask a deaf person, show me where, tell me where's Karbala. He'll show you where Karbala is. Is there anybody who's sane in the Muslim world who doesn't know where Karbala is? Nobody. Is anybody unaware where Imam al Hussein is buried? If anybody asks for directions, please take me to Karbala. Please show me Karbala. Please inform me on a map where Karbala is. Even if you can't take him, even if you don't tell him where it is, can you show it to him? Yes. Can you tell him where it is? Can you point it out to him? Can you show him where Karbala is? Where Imam Hussein is buried? Have you seen that millions of people go annually to Karbala? In Arba'in, people of all religions, creeds, ideologies, all of them walk on a sirat, on a path that takes them to Karbala. Millions of people all take a walk from Abbas Alamdar in a straight line to the maqam of al Hussein in Karbala. Literally a straight line. Does anybody not know where Karbala is? Does anybody not know who Imam of Karbala is? Does anybody not know what the station and maqam of al Hussein, who's buried in Karbala and his family is? Everybody knows it. I'll ask you one question. Can I, if I ask anybody, I ask a blind man, show me Karbala, he'll show me Karbala. If I ask a deaf person, the deaf person won't even hear him, but he'll say, I'll show you Karbala. Can anybody tell me, where is Yazid's grave? <clears throat> Guide me to Yazid's grave. Guide me to Yazid. Leave alone guiding you to the ways of Yazid. They can't even die guide you to where Yazid is. Practically 99.9% .9 recurring percent of the Ummah don't know where Yazid is buried. And those who know where Yazid is buried, they don't even bother going there. He's not even buried in a proper cemetery, so to speak. Who goes to Yazid? If you want guidance today, doesn't seem like anybody goes to Yazid anymore. But Al Hussein, everybody goes to Al Hussein. That's why when you're making this dua, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Take us on that straight path. Understand, سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ عَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Who and what that straight path is. And how close that distance between the two nuqtas of Qur'an and Ali al-Murtada are. And if you 
who are is nothing we are not even worth to be sifar we are not even zeros if we become little dots that are attached to those dots that are universes on their own inshallah taala it will be a means of us inshallah taala finding salvation in this world and in hereafter may we continue being on sirat al mustaqim and may rasulullah take us on sirat al mustaqim and may we have the hands of ali fatima hasan and hussein guiding us on sirat al mustaqim because allah wa inna rabbi ala sirat al mustaqim because when you reach the destination sirat al mustaqim allah is at the end allah give to be and inna inshallah taala jazakum wa khair zama alina ya bala جزاكم الله خير جزاء وما علينا الا البلاء giving us a renewed appreciation and meaning of اهدنا الصراط المستقيم and undoubtedly for each of us when we when we recite that in surah fatiha undoubtedly our yaqeen and our mind will go to the Ahlul Bayt when we recite Sirat Al-Mustaqim. So Jazakumullah Khair to our Al-Hajj Hafiz Muhammad Fuzail Sufi for the beautiful discourse. Inshallah before we stand up for Salatu Wassalam, we also make Dua Shifa for the respected father of our brother Siraj, our Buddha Yahya, Abraham who is ill with COVID. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant him and all those who are ill with Shifa, uh, with Shifa, with all those who are ill with COVID, Shifai Kamila. We also make the wine Malfira for the Honorable uh, Janab al marhum Safi Siddiqui, Rahimahullah, the elder brother of our respected Umijan, whose resign it is on Ashura. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status and grant him the highest support in Janatul Firdos. Inshallah, we will now stand up for Salatu Wassalam. کربلا کے جانی ساروں کو سلام کربلا کے جانی ساروں کو سلام فاطمہ زہرا کے پیاروں کو سلام مصطفیٰ سلام یا حسین ابن علی مشکل کشا یا حسین ابن علی مشکل کشا آپ کے سب جان نساروں کو سلام اکبروں سے پہ جان قربان ہو اکبروں سے پہ جان قربان ہو میرے دل کے تاجداروں کو سلام میرے دل کے تاجداروں کو سلام قاسم و عباس پہ لاکھو درود کربلا کے شاہ سواروں Okay.
प्यासे गुल हजारों को सलाम कर बला के जा निसारों को सलाम फातिमा जहरा के प्यारों को موسیقی يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم والحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته لكل حول من الاهوال المقتهم قوم وتعالى في شان حبيبه الكريم مخبرا وامرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعليه وفاطمة وحسن وحسين وآله وأصحابه بعدد كل مخلوقاتك يا رسول الله انظر حالنا يا حبيب الله اسمع قالنا إننا بمحل عم مغرق خزجدي سهل لنا أشكالنا في خمسة نطف بها حرم وباء الحاطمة المصطفى والمرتضى وبناهما والفاطمة إلهي بحق بني فاطمة كبر قول إيما كل خاتمة أجر دعوة موت كل والقبول من ودست دعما لآل الرسول اللهم أحنا في محبة الشيخ وأمتنا في محبة الشيخ وأحشرنا تحت تراب قدامك لا بأحباء الشيخ لا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بفضلك دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعواهم الحمد لله رب العالمين